Okay, hello everyone. Miss Fisher here. Um, you have, we read chapter seven in class on Friday and then you read chapter eight for homework. And so we are going to, I just wanna go over with you and so um, page, uh, what page number is it? Page 18 in your green packets. Um, so that way you have these notes. Feel free to pause this video at any time um, so that you can write down what I have um, here for the answers for uh, this particular page in our green packets. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the glossary. Um, we have some words here and I just want to kind of go over what these mean. Uh, we have a verb at the top, cleaved. And cleaved means to stick to or attached. So um, uh, when I think of cleaved, I think of like let's say someone's chopping wood and the ax is cleaved into the, into the wood. Um, where the split is. Something is stuck to or attached to something is cleaved. Um, whittles is a verb, which means to carve into wood. If someone whittles something, if they whittle a little um, toy out of wood, they're carving it out of wood. Aberrations is a noun. An aberration is a departure from what is normal or what is expected. Libel is also a noun. That, meant, that means it's something to harm another person's reputation. So um, a, a rumor is another word for a libel. Um, you know, something that's uh, a rumor is uh, something that is said to harm another person's reputation. So it's a libel. Uh, procured is a verb, to obtain, especially with care. When you procure something, you're obtaining it carefully. Quelled is a verb. Um, to quell something is to have put an end to suppressed. Um, so if you, you've quelled it, you've put an end to it or suppressed it. Um, unfathomable is an adjective. It's a describing word. It, it means it is incapable of being fully understood. If something is unfathomable, you're just having a really hard time understanding it. People usually use it in the sense that when they experience something or they are um, witness to something that's extreme or um, uh, kind of like out, really out of the realm of norm, uh, reality, they say it's unfathomable. So like for example, if I were to go um, uh, back in time and let's say I was witness to, um, I don't know, something terrible, uh, Pearl Harbor, I might say, it was absolutely terrible. It was unfathomable, the amount of destruction I saw, something like that. So over here, a memorable line in these chapters. Go back uh, now and find a line in, this cha in one of these two chapters that you thought was really memorable to you. The other thing that's opinion-based here is <clears throat> this section, who is your favorite character at this point in the novel and why? So please pause this video and fill this out in a few sentences of who your favorite character is and why. Okay, so now that you've done that, um, here are some of the main events from these two chapters. The first is Jem retrieves his pants and he finds them mended and folded. Um, he's really scared. Scout really doesn't want him to go and get his pants, but he ends up going anyway and he finds them mended and folded for him. Um, it snows in Maycomb and the children make a snowman. Uh, this is, uh, was an interesting event for them as that doesn't normally happen there. There is a fire and Miss Maudie's house burns down. Now this was a very intense part of the novel and you really can feel for Miss Maudie and the, this, is a, this, is an, this is a place in the novel where Scout really is kind of uh, learning the realities of life and um, just the challenges that everyone is faced with. Um, Boo comes out and kindly wraps Scout in a blanket. This is the big surprise. <clears throat> um, uh, after they've been standing outside and Scout's extremely cold, uh, waiting for you know the the whole Miss Maudie's house fire thing to kind of um, fizz out, uh, without really noticing or knowing it, Boo comes and wraps a scout, wraps scout in a blanket, and she's so tired and she's so that she doesn't even really noticing what's happening until it's happened. Um, <clears throat> and so this is a this was this is a bit of a, a jerker in the novel in the sense that it's maybe you know, a bit unexpected. So if we go over the review questions, 
Number one, what evidence is there in the text to support the notion that Scout learns from the advice she is given? And um, I found this quote, um, and I, I think it does a, a good job of supporting the notion that Scout learns um, and that she's, that she's absorbing and taking in what she is being taught. As Atticus had once advised me to do, I tried to climb into Jem's skin and walk around in it. If I had gone alone to the Radley place at two in the morning, my funeral would have been held the next afternoon. So I left Jem alone and tried not to bother him. So you can see that she is, you know, doing her best to recall what Atticus has advised her to do and that she was trying to put herself into Jem's shoes. She was trying to be empathetic towards Jem. Um, and so she said, I, you know, I just kind of tried to leave him alone and let him do, let him do him kind of thing. Number two, when Jem goes back to retrieve his pants from the Radley yard, what is surprising about what he finds, and who do you think is responsible for this surprise? So um, Jem ends up finding his trousers folded, mended, and neatly hand, hand, I think it's supposed to be hanging, over this fence. Um, this is surprising as he had left them tangled and torn there. And we can probably rightfully suspect that Boo Radley is responsible for this kind gesture, that he probably went out, mended the pants, hung them, fold, folded them, and hang, hung them over the fence for Jem to come back and get. Um, and we can maybe guess that it was Boo Radley. Explain why Miss Maud, oop. Oh, sorry about that. Let me get back down to where we were. Explain why Miss Maudie laughs when Scout uses the word morphodite to describe the snowman. How does this add to the narrator's childlike tone? So what Miss Maudie actually said was hermaphrodite, meaning the snowman had male and female apparel, but Scout misheard and repeats morphodite, which is not even a real word. And this is a humorous episode um, in the sense that it reminds us that Scout is still a child doing the things that children do and she is still learning and maturing as we are going through this novel. And I have said this multiple times and you know I'll continue to say it as we, can, as we read through um, To Kill a Mockingbird, Harper Lee, our author, all, you know, consistently puts in these little moments to remind us that Scout is a child, to remind us to keep, keep, keep reading this novel in the, in the eyes of a child and know that she is, that this is a child narrator, so we may even be getting a skewed sense of reality of what's actually happening. Because, um, you know, a, ch a child doesn't necessarily always have the capacity to understand everything that's going on um, or the complexities of certain issues. So this is a way for Lee to remind us, yet again, that she's a child, we should be keeping our minds open to the fact that we are re hearing this story through the minds of a child and that Scout is continually continuously learning and growing and maturing throughout this novel. Number four, why do Jem and Atticus decide not to not return the blanket to Boo Radley after the fire? Um, Jem is starting to realize that Boo is not the malevolent figure he thought he was, and when he realizes Mr. Nathan deliberately blocked up the hole in the tree, he starts to understand that relationship and fears that if Mr. Radley knew about the blanket, Boo might suffer the consequences of that. And so they therefore decide to not return the blanket in order to protect Boo. Jem is at a point in his life, you know, kind of a little bit unlike Scout, where he, he may be beginning to have the ability to kind of understand the more complex situations. And after hearing, you know, what Miss Maudie um, had to say about Boo's relationship with the authority figures in his life, his father and his big brother, we can, you know, begin to understand and put ourselves into Boo's shoes that he, he, why he may stay locked up inside and that he may actually not be as bad as what we thought after all, that he's actually a nice guy. And so he decides, you know what, we don't even want to risk Boo getting in trouble. He seems to be our friend and so we're not going to re return the blanket. And number five, by the end of chapter eight, what is your opinion of Boo Radley? How has it changed from chapter one? And this is an opinion-based question. Um, the only thing I want you to do is I, I want you to make sure that you're aware of the changing characterization of Boo. Um, how has it changed from the beginning to where we are now in the novel? So go ahead, um, after this, uh, I guess I'll stop the video because this is the last number. Uh, 
Yep, of rev one of the review questions. You can go ahead and answer number five, and we will see you um, next class. Thank you.